Hey Valerie, thanks for sending me your swim video for analysis. The things, first things I'm looking at are breathing, body balance, rotation, and kick because the breathing and the kick will impact your body alignment and also your body balance. When it comes to breathing, you want to make sure you're rotating your hip to take a breath versus just turning your head and trying to lift your neck. From a side view, you rotate on your hip, keep half your face in the water, take a quick breath, rotate back down versus if you didn't rotate and you just tried to lift your head, that would cause your, your body balance to be out of alignment and cause um, your legs to sink. Um, make sure after you take that inhale that you also look down and you continue the stroke. When it comes to the kick, you want to make sure you're kicking from your quad and hip flexors up and down, your toes stay together. I could see from the back view that you were splitting your legs a little bit and you primarily do that when you breathe. You do a split kick. Usually people tend to do that when they're trying to find balance versus um, rotating to breathe, extending that arm. You only extend that arm when you're breathing and then turn your head back down and continue your stroke. After breathing, body bounce and kick, I'm looking at the three main phases of the stroke, recovery, what goes on with your um, hands out of the water. You should have a nice high elbow recovery, fingertips below the wrist, below the elbow, because that impacts hand entry. Fingertips, wrist, elbow, enter. You can think about rotation. Um, after you enter, you rotate, but you want to know it's that underwater catch and push that drive the hip rotation. So you don't have much power behind your pull, so you don't your your catch and push isn't really driving the hip rotation because you don't have much power behind your pull. Two reasons. Um, going backtracking after we look at recovery, we're looking at hand entry. You can see your left hand enters a little bit flat and shallow, elbow and palm entering at the same time, a little bit of crossover. And also, you have a very straight arm pull. You want to make sure you get some elbow bend. This is the catch. The catch precedes the push. So you want to make sure you're catching before you're pushing all the way past your hip. Also, the speed of your stroke changes a little bit. This is recovery, easy, 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 enter. Catch and push is fast. Easy, 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 enter. Catch and push is fast. So you want this part, catch and the push, you want to put all that power and force behind your pull. That'll drive your rotation. That'll allow you to pull the greatest amount of water with every arm stroke. Um, so the key drills for you, I would have you do um, some catch-up drill. Catch-up drill will allow you to focus on the catch part of your stroke. And it'll also allow you to keep this arm extend, to help keep this arm extended out in front of you while you're breathing instead of dropping your arm while you breathe. Another drill is double pump will also help you with that body balance. Um, and then just really being mindful of the hip rotation, being mindful that the underwater pull drives that hip rotation, and then maybe doing, besides the catch-up drill, adding some underwater doggy paddle drills where you're just focused on the underwater pull. So all in all, I mean, your stroke isn't bad. You know, there's just a few little things to keep in mind as you're swimming. Break it down, um, you know, during the warm-ups. Think about breathing, body balance, rotation, and kick. And then you start to think about individually, think about um, the recovery, and then how that impacts and sets you up for a hand entry, and then how that hand entry sets you up for a catch and a push. Anyways, if you have any questions, um, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you make it a great day.